One of the things that I also like to do during development and debugging that I actually haven't shown you just yet at I don't think any point here is to do like a little progress bar, a little progress report. Not using the pop-ups but using the little output window. So I want to show you how to add that. It's a single line of code. It's super easy but you have to understand the difference between maybe two little terms. So let's just take a script task here and we'll play around with it. So I used C Sharp, I think, heavily in the last one or two videos. So I'm going to use Visual Basic this time. And I'm going to have my script task do some stuff. And again, I delete these comments, uh, you know, probably more because so that I can demo this a little easier. I really probably don't do it in the real world. Uh, I will delete these. So let's do this. Let's make it sleep. You know, we're in development, so we can put this to sleep. Uh, oops. And so I'll make it sleep for a half a second. And, you know, like here we would actually do something. So do some important long-running task. And we make it sleep. And we need to do another long-running task task that reports no status and then you know we could do one final big task that returns no status and I'm just going to copy and paste around here um, so that we can see I'm just putting them to sleep but here's what I mean I'm going to run it I'm going to flip to the output tab what's happening right then ah that's not long enough I need them to be longer Let's make them a full, like, two seconds each. Yes, I know a real programmer would have made that a variable. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, what's happening right now? We don't know, right? We have no report that comes back and says, okay, I've done this. I just finished this. I just finished this. Wouldn't it be nice to have that information come back here in the output window? Easy to do come over here. I call it a progress bar. However, I have a different interpretation of a progress bar than do the people who wrote SSIS. So here's what you have to do. You're going to have to use the DTS object and you're going to use an event. And there's a couple of different ways that we can fire this. Take a look here. We, looking at these, you know, which of these do you want to do? Do you want to fire an informational message? Or do you want to fire progress? You want to do information. Firing progress requires an on progress event handler. Not what we want. We want an informational message that will be written to the output window. So this will write to the output window, among other things. So let's do fire information. So fire information. And there's a couple of things. We want our information code to be zero here because we just want a just a message. It's not we're not returning anything particular. Um, which task or which subcomponent or what part of this script task is this doing? Uh, this is the first long running task and has completed. And do you have a help file associated with this? No, I'm going to say that's an empty string. And what's your help context? None. And do you want to fire this again if this same event occurs? No, that doesn't really matter for me. Okay, so I've got my fire information set up. Now let's bring it, copy it, and paste it down here. The second long-running task has completed and we'll just do the final down here the third and I'll do it like that so you can actually see easy enough let's just do this here execute take a look at our output we wait two seconds there we go the first long running task is completed you can see it's updating is kinda giving us a progress bar one line of code how easy is that right now see you bring it in right here you can see it says the script task 
All right, watch. Uh, come up here. My important stuff. Run it again. Come to your output over here. And you can see that this is bringing in the task name. Okay, so that gets listed here. So you don't have to bring the task name in. You want to give this description, this subcomponent. You want to give it something meaningful that matters in your particular script. So that's how you do it. I mean, there's not much else to it. I'm going to go ahead and stop here for those of you that want to know the VB version. If you want to know the C Sharp, I will do that as well. But for you, those of you who only want the VB, I'm done. You can finish. Okay, new C Sharpies. Let's go over here. So here's my C sharp version. Um, come down here. Same thing, right? So put her to sleep for 2000 and events dot fire information. There was one little thing about using uh, C sharp. You're dealing with a reference variable. Um, information code of zero my subcomponent this is the first section and it has completed and I have no help file so I can put null I could say string dot empty I could put an empty string I have no help context and this is where it gets true tricky because you do you want this to fire again when this event occurs um, sure but this actually will fail we will not actually be able to work because this is not being a reference variable here so it says it must be passed with the ref keyword so go ahead and create yourself a variable fire again and set it to be equals true and now say ref fire again so it's a reference variable now okay. and I'll just do this once again and down here, uh, this is the second section and third section. And, oops, I messed up. I did launch the breakpoint debugger. So we'll execute the C-sharp guy. And, you know, it does the exact same thing, right? So now at the C-sharp, because it's named C-sharp, but it's the same thing. So just a little quick tip, nothing major, right? But it will help you in your debugging, I think.